Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. This is Terry. Hey, today we're on a uh, project inside our Momentum 31G toy hauler that uh, not only applies to the Momentum, but it's, uh, we're gonna be working on the Happy Jack bunk system. And uh, probably everybody that's drawn to this video has probably already seen online that there, there's been some trouble here. And uh, the factories are, are pretty much uh, just putting stuff in as fast as they can. And you can't blame them. I mean, that's, that's what they're there for. Uh, but we're gonna make some changes that uh, is gonna bulletproof that, that system. We're gonna solve the, the problem of the drive shaft set screw backing out and that shaft moving over and one side of the bed falling. Uh, we're gonna solve the problem of uh, support in the lower couches. We're gonna be adding two more uh, support legs in those couches. And uh, I'll have the links for this. Now, I, I know, and let me say this, I know some people have contacted Grand Design um, and have been able to get these on warranty. Uh, some people haven't. Honestly, I didn't even mess with that. I just went on Lippert's website, bought two more of these, called it good. Uh, like I said, I, I'll put the links down there. They're $30, $31 or something a piece. Um, but if you want to contact Grand Design or whoever your manufacturer is, uh, you might be able to get some uh, from them for free. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll put the link to these, so if you want to buy them, that'll be fine. We're going to be changing fasteners uh, that hold the uh, support arms to the walls. We're going to be not only adding these legs, but actually changing the fasteners uh, that are used to hold these legs. We're going to be solving the problem of the uh, drive shaft coming loose. And... Uh, let me reset here and I'm, I'm going to show you the difference in the fasteners and what we're going to do. And then uh, after that, we'll go out to the 31G and uh, I'll show you how to do it. I wanted to just take a minute here and show some fastener differences. So on the rails attached to the walls, on the right there is, the, is what the factory does, or at least what was done in mine, which is... Uh, I believe that's an M6 self tapper, an inch long, and uh, the replacement on the left is what we're going to be using. That is a one quarter lag screw uh, made for wood, and uh, that'll be much better suited because the um, studs are actually aluminum with a wooden insert, so that'll be much more suited to what's going on there. For these legs themselves, for the Happy Jack legs themselves, I don't know what that is on the right, but it, it's tiny. It's definitely a tiny self-tapper. And uh, we're gonna be using a number 12, one inch number 12 self-tapper there. And then on the drive shaft itself, uh, we're gonna be making a couple of changes here. This, this is a quarter 20 set screw. If we'll focus on it maybe, a quarter 20 set screw. And that's what's in there originally. And that has really been the source of a lot of trouble with the, uh, with the top bed falling because that set screw has been backing out, allowing the drive shaft to slide off of the passenger side um, mechanism over there. And uh, probably just, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna use some, not Loctite, but JB Weld Permalock, same, same sort of stuff. Uh, we're using the red today. That's heavy duty. You can put blue on it. That's medium. I'm just going to put red on it and be done. Uh, but we're going to do a couple of things, a couple of other things that are going to make some difference here. So um, somebody had posted this online. I'm not sure who it was, but thank you to whoever it was that had posted that about putting a hose clamp um, on the shaft to prevent that um, connecting shaft from being able to slide. And uh, you can put a regular just worm drive hose clamp on it. Th this is what I had in my shop, which are uh, fuel injection clamps. So it does pretty much the same thing. That's a 12 to 14 millimeter range clamp that measuring across the hexes, they're like 13 and 13 and three quarter millimeter across the hexes. So uh, anything that'll fit that size will be fine. And in lieu of the quarter 20 set screw we're actually going to put a quarter 20 half inch long grade 8 bolt in that hole um, i just trust the bolt more there's nothing 
the set screw doesn't need to necessarily need to be a set screw. There's really nothing to interfere with there. I'll show you whenever we get out there what I did, but pretty much straightforward on the, on these changes and uh, we'll go over everything once once we get out there and I'll, I'll show you how all of it works. All right, we're back at the 31G here and I'll show you what we um, have done. He said the first thing is in lieu of the set screw, I've actually replaced it with that quarter 20 half inch grade eight bolt. Doesn't have to be grade eight, but I just feel safer with that. Um, it's an eighth inch key in that hex in uh, eighth, eighth inch hex key in that uh, set screw and I, I just feel safer with the bolt in there as you can see there's no interference with anything i did zip tie these wires just to make for sure that everything had plenty of clearance get around here where you can see i'm going to put i uh, put the uh clamp on there and that this clamp will prevent this shaft from sliding and that that's really that's really the problem here um, see the one over on the other side and it's just slid on to that hex shaft over there so what the problem has been here is that the set screw would loosen up and allow this shaft to slide towards the motor and the gear case and eventually what would happen there is that drive shaft would actually just come off that hex on the other side um, and that and that would cause the bed to fall and obviously that's not a bad that's a that's not a good plan it's a bad deal so this should absolutely prevent that and uh, like i said simple enough uh, i know i said it earlier but i want to say it again just to make sure everybody knows that this is a fuel injection hose clamp and I, I use that just because that's what i have a regular worm drive clamp would be fine there I feel a little extra security with the uh with the better clamp but whatever clamp you have that will go on that will be fine uh, another thing that we did here, we had trouble with this um, low side limit switch on the uh, control box there. And you can see those holes in the ceiling. That, that's actually where Grand Design had this thing mounted. And with the three season doors, you can tell it, it was stuck up. And uh, with, this, with this upper bunk stuck all the way at the top, you couldn't work on that thing at all. So... Uh, my, my dealer actually moved that from the ceiling down to the wall. Uh, I would suggest that. We had low limit, low side limit switch trouble two different times here. And uh, having to, those are the limit switches over there on the right hand side and they're tiny little plugs. They're almost impossible to get in and out if they're all the way up there. So moving that's also another good idea, but I, I just feel like this will bulletproof the whole uh, hex key um shaft issue here and uh like i said we do have red loctite on that bolt and uh pretty sure that will solve all of that problem so let me reset and we'll look at all right let's talk about the uh the way that these rails are attached to the wall so what uh what grand design did and i think what everybody does uh like we showed you in there is they use these little self tappers and uh, at least in the construction of the grand design that is not a very good choice because it's an aluminum uh, wall stud with wood in the middle and you need to bite the wood and, and not really the aluminum so these are quarter by one lag screws and just a matter of pulling these out and our pulling the self tappers out and putting the lag screws in there. The suggestion I would make here would be to, um, I use my little quarter inch impact to get, every, to get them out and I, I change these obviously one at a time, but I, I use, my, use that quarter inch impact to get them out, but I put all these back in by hand and there are, uh, there's 24 total holding this thing up. There's a couple of, you can't see the second one, in, but down here in the bottom, Hopefully you can see that. Two more in the very bottom, two along the rail, and then there are two up here in the very, very top. Um, now in this application, like I said, I, I don't know about, 
I don't know about everybody else's brand, but I can tell you in this particular trailer, those ones up there in the very, very top, that top rail is apparently steel uh, because the self tappers were in steel and there was no wood in it. So, and they're tight. So I just left the self tappers in there and changed all the rest of these 16, um, four in each leg um, to the quarter inch lag screws and hand tighten them. And they are very tight. Um, the little self tapper uh, was a pretty good pilot hole actually for the, for the quarter inch uh, lag screws and uh, maybe we can see it a little better on this side yeah, see the two down there in the bottom one in here you can't see one you can see right there and then like I said two more up here in the very very top um, and those those two in the top of each leg are the ones that I left alone but that should absolutely secure these legs um, these support legs to the wall and not have any more problem with that okay All right, so on to the leg project. So you can see where the legs were um, in the center. Now there is a tang that goes up, but there's no screw in there from the factory. So I just left this the same way. I, I don't know how you would go about getting a screw in there without cutting the hole bigger than the hole I wanted to cut in the bottom of this. And it is held in with these tiny little self tappers. I don't know if they're finally focused, but I don't know what they are, but they're, they're little. So I like said we moved up to the number 12 by one inch self tappers and uh, the, w the way that I spaced these, I'm sorry we had to close up everything. It was, it keeps trying to rain today and I don't want the ramp to get wet. So in our 31G, at least there's this diamond plate transition between the regular garage floor and where it dovetails down to the ramp. And uh, obviously you want that leg to be up here on this flat part. So measured over about 16 and a half inches here to the center of where this where I wanted this to be to get it just inside that diamond tread now if yours is like mine if you can see right here there there's a little some sort of support uh, under this under this bottom of this couch that's right there there's actually another one that's right there so basically the 16 and a half inches falls just to the rearward side of the second one so i just cut a little slit there and use the self tappers to attach it okay over here on the front side the center here is about 12 and a half inches and we kind of got that same thing going there's the two there's one there's one so this tang and the slit in the tang is just forward of that front um little support it's not it's not metal i don't i don't know what it is it's some sort of upholstery support there and then basically just just self tappers from there um this front rail appears to be one by one steel so those are the our one inch self tappers and then as you can see i uh I just put the screws, the original screws, back in the holes just to kind of finish that out a little bit. So I'm going to reset here, and I'm actually going to put one of these up there so everybody can just see the process. And uh, back in a second. All right, I've already cut our slit here, but so we, we just basically just cut the slit with the pocket knife. And we're going to put our little tang up in there. And then it's just a matter of running the self tapper in. Literally, that's all there is to it. Make sure that we're straight with the world there. And that's as complicated as it is. So let me finish this up and uh, we'll come back to it. I thought I'd go ahead and talk about a couple of other little Happy Jack mods that we did. Um, not safety related like the others are but but just a couple things that i that i we've done that i that i pretty easy to do and and really enjoyed the that the first thing we'll talk about is the table the the happy jack table itself dust is just too big uh, it's a pain can't get around it um to get out on the patio the rain stopped so actually can actually open up the patio we've, we've had 
the forecast today said rain off and on and, it, and that turned out to be exactly right it was on anytime the ramp was out and it was off anytime the the patio was up so there you go but we bought this little table at walmart and uh it's just a little fold-up table we keep it over in the half bath and it works out fine the the deal with this table is, is it's just super light so you, you can move it so you can get around it get out on the patio and uh this makes life a lot easier there and much more appropriately sized I plugged these holes just so we could keep stuff out of them. Um, they're just some uh, plugs from Amazon. I'll, I'll put a link in the description of that and uh, of this table as well. And then as everybody knows that has this, kind of has a tendency to be a dark hole. So I used to put these uh, LED lights up here. They just kind of, they have their own switch. So you can just turn them off, off and on with their own switch and at least in the 31g there's this light on the side and i basically drilled a hole uh hard to see but anyway i drilled a hole up there very very top above the happy jack and uh fished a wire down into this hole for power and basically just wires across on the other side to these lights so super simple deal and uh like i said just those things just make the happy jack work out much better uh, they do for us anyway um, we don't ever use the bed up there i've really thought about taking it out but i'm just going to leave it already got the lights in it now so i'm going to leave it and uh that pretty that pretty much wraps it up um i think these mods will really uh really add safety to the happy jack and uh probably all of this probably should have been done um by the factories whenever they did it but um, this should bulletproof your happy jack and uh, appreciate everybody watching leave, leave your comments and suggestions down below and i'll try to answer questions as quickly as i can uh, like i said i have all the links to uh, at least the main parts of everything we've used here uh, the the screws and that stuff all came from lowe's or uh, i had all of it in stock because that's me but uh, tractor supply lows whatever should have everything you need to do this nothing expensive about this whole deal at all i mean a, a, just a few dollars to uh to make all the fasteners and everything i said i think the legs were about 80 dollars delivered uh well worth that um if you want to fight the warranty battle then be my guest but i didn't want to and uh, just like i said really appreciate everybody watching and uh leave your comments below subscribe for more we're going to continue to work on uh, more rv related things more talent things more shop things um, all the stuff that we do on the channel so thanks again for watching have a great day